Yeah, right, guys. Have you got a glut of patty pan summer squash? Follow me, I've got quite a few recipes for you. Some simple, some quick, some time consuming, some as an accompaniment, some as a main course. Here we go. Right then, as they say, let's start off with the simplest. Get the heat on. Just high temperature seared squash. And gonna be a lot of reaching over it, aren't they? Right, they're clean. Top and tail them. I'm only doing small portions because I can't see uh, much point in making loads and loads and loads of squashes to eat. Get your oil piping hot, in with a squash. And sear them till they are sort of brown. Salt and pepper to taste. A little bit more. And just before you serve up, now preferably fresh tarragon or fresh chervil. I have neither, so dry tarragon. Much as you like, and it goes perfectly with squash. There we are, all done. That quick and as a compliment. And the taste test. Cooked right through. Mm. Yeah. Great. Right. Mm. Can't eat too much, I've got a lot to do. It's green one this time. And what we're doing this time, we're going to uh, make the slice about a centimetre thick ish. I'll do Save that bit, I need that. Right. Salt and pepper. This time, to dredge it in flour. Yeah. There we go, oil's just smoking, just started shimmering. Oh. Give it a squash. Lovely, look at that. Right, change plates, I don't want to be putting it in the flour, do I? <laughs> okay, let's give it a go, it really is that quick. Nice. And it's going to be hot. Yep, yeah, nicely charred all the way round. Oh, hmm. Hmm. totally different taste to the other way of frying it. A little bit more of that. Oh, I'm going to be full up. I've got a roast tonight as well. Okay, then we're going for a roast this time. It's 
So we salvage that one, like I said, let's have that top off there. And the trick with these is once they start cooking, do not turn them over. If you turn them over, they'll go all soggy. the oven 20 25 30 minutes I'll let you know ouch, 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 ouch. well there we are that's been 25 minutes ah, let's have a go one of each straight out of the oven so they be piping hot mmm that that's a lot more caramelised than the uh, the fried ones. Mm. Mm. Saving them because I've got a roast later. I'll reheat those. Right, guys, moving swiftly on. Today is um, stuffed squash or stuffed patty pans um, I'm doing these sort of size but what they got yeah, a bit medium I suppose and I'm only going to do one portion there's no point wasting them because I'm only going to eat one anyway if you want to make more just double up or triple up etc so first up is patty pan stuffed with basil orzo so we got um, orzo pasta which I'm going to boil drain and cool ricotta cheese hard goat's cheese can be grated the patty pan obviously salt pepper oil and basil so I'll get you set up and uh, let's get going okay that's boiling nicely a little bit of salt much and in with the orzo I'll show you what orzo is for those who don't know tiny little pasta grains almost like uh, grains of rice look right enough for one not too much okay now while that's boiling we need to get the squash in the oven and what I'm doing is going to make it take the bottom off a little bit so it's a little bit flatter just that little piece like that that'll do and we take the top off about there. A bit of oil on the tray. A bit of oil on the squash. In the oven, uh, 30, 35 minutes, 200 Celsius. This one here, sorry, this one I'm boiling is for the next stuffed one. And this one requires boiling, so I'll bring it back to that in a minute. Anyway, um, while the other one's baking, I'm just gonna prep the filling. So it's a bit of basil, Italian hard cheese grated, about a tablespoon of ricotta. Probably far too much actually because um, I'm sort of doing a big portion. A bit of pepper. A bit of salt. Too much. Mix it all together. Here we are out of the oven. It's gonna be a bit hot this, just let it cool down a bit really. But I want to get on with it. We've got three to do. Like I say, I've probably got far too much fill in here. Yeah. Mm. 
pilot eye. Okay then, back in the oven with that. Another five, ten minutes. Well, there we go. That's been in the oven for eight minutes. Looks done. Give it a go. Is tasty, yeah. I never used to be a great fan of squash, you know, but this year, <clears throat> right then. Next up, another stuffed squash. This is the one I just boiled about 20 minutes till it's just soft. Um, small onion, sausage, I'm using Cumberland sausage, a couple of tomatoes, salt, pepper, a drop of wine, doesn't matter what it is, some parmesan type stuff, mixed herbs and garlic. Right, here we go. That's more than enough. Right, sausage. In with the onion, a little bit of garlic. Whew. Just a sprinkle of mixed herbs, anything will do. Glug of wine. Not too much. And while that's cooking, what we're going to do, we're going to scoop out the squash again. And this time we've got to save the lid properly. These are very, very juicy. Just trying to get all the seeds out, look. Right, that is it. Tell me what, that's not a bad guess. I'm going to get too much oil in. Ooh. A bit of parmesan on top. Quite a bit. Yeah, why not? And then, <laughs> which way round it go doesn't matter. Plonk it on and in the oven for 20 minutes or so. So I'll catch you in a bit. Let's give it a go, as they say. It looks lush. It smells nice as well. Very juicy. Very, very juicy. God, it's hot. Mm. No, oh, yeah. Totally different filling to the last one, obviously. Mm. Well, that's very nice, guys, that one. It really is. Of course, you can do what you want with this. Of course you can. Um, 
any type of sausage, different cheeses, chilli, anything you want. You can stuff these with anything. Right, next up, uh, squash, tomato, mozzarella, casserole. So we got the squash, we got the tomatoes, a little bit of bolognese flavouring in there. Sun-dried tomatoes that have been julienned, some sausage I'm going to chop up, um, topped up onions, mozzarella, a bit of chilli and some parmesan. Looking at how much moisture came out of the squash in the uh, stuffed recipes I've just done, I decided to salt these overnight. So just slice them, take the seeds out and then cover them in salt. Oh, where are we? Here's the liquid drained off or salted off from the uh, squashes. Just go drain this and strain it and rinse it and get back to you. Let's get more scissors out. You don't need to cook these too long because they're going to be in the oven for an hour anyway. Right, break your sausage. I'll take the skins off the sausage. Wow, can you see that? Take the skins off the sausages. These are Cumberland again. Just break it into small chunks. Don't have to use sausage if you don't want to. Totally up to you. Another wing it recipe. But Cumberland's got a little bit of flavour in it, you know. That's what you're after, but try and break the sausage down a bit. A little bit of pepper, not a lot. Taste the mutton honey salt in. Right, very, very careful with these. Basket of fire chilies. Just a little bit of flavour. Do it in one day, the top's going to come off, isn't it? No. <laughs> Sauce. Right, let's cut this through for a bit and the rest of it's all about building really. I think it take long so we'll get, get the dish ready. If you haven't got a dish with a lid then just use a normal dish and put foil on it. Okay that's it. It's not quick. very small layer over the bottom just to uh, keep things off the bottom so we're doing right like I say what I'm going to do is trim some of these with 90 degree edges or whatever you call it so they fit a little bit better let's have green on the bottom Some dried tomatoes first. It's a bit like a lasagna, really. Then some mozzarella. Then we'll have a layer of yellow. Oh, they do fit in the corner, is that? Isn't that? Oh, that's spooky, that. <laughs> Nothing neat about my cooking. Parmesan. Oh, Use as much or as little as you want. Um, I'm going to give that a good dose of salt and pepper. There we go, guys. Looks good enough to eat that. Right in the oven. Uh, about an hour. Uh, gas more, I think. And gas more. Uh, 180 Celsius. And here we go with the uh, the cheesy casserole. Oh, look at that. That looks how it is. Ooh. Must be getting good at this cooking, Mark. I'm not going to use a plate for this one. Straight with a spoon. Here 
Here we go. Mmm. Oh. Got the chilli straight away. It's like a lasagna with no pasta. Which was the intention. I've got to tell you guys, that is nice. The squash is over the back there, still draining a little bit. Going to chop it up in a minute. Um, what we got then? We got cream cheese, we got um, spring onions, beaten egg, bit of butter, chilli, mayo, parmesan, Ritz crackers, and some spray oil to spray the Ritz crackers later. Butter. A little room here, Steve O. Let's chop some of these squash up a little bit. I'm actually going to dry them as well for a little bit. I think I need all these. Forgot to mention garlic. Oh, they're softening quite a bit. So, in the spring onions. A little bit chilly. Right, and while that's cooking, we'll prep the uh, sauce. Right, a dollop of mayo, a dollop of garlic on there. Right, and what we need is some cream cheese. Just put my spoon somewhere. Move it. Okay, we're on this camera for this because the big camera. It's gone flat. First time ever. Got the same amount of uh, mayo. If you're going to buy a mayo, buy Hellman's. <laughs> Load of parmesan, we'll save a little bit because we've got bits on top. I reckon that needs a few chilli flakes because it's a boring colour. <laughs> I reckon I've got plenty, so I'm going to do two dishes. Right. layer in the bottom so we need. Hmm. Right. Give these a good spritz in just to so they go brown as they're cooking. I don't, yeah, let's say in the oven. Still a half hour maybe. Oh my word, this looks nice. I'll do a photograph of this. Right guys, this looks divine. Mm. 
Mmm, that is quite good. Yep. The egg mix has set very nicely. A bit like, um, I don't know, frittata casserole, I suppose. Mmm. Right guys, up with the next one. Pizza with a squash base. So we've got squash, we've got mozzarella, parmesan, uh, pizza sauce, and some pepperoni. Okay then. Okay, don't mess with it too much. You want it to have those nice grilled lines. Alternatively, do it on a barbecue. Let's have a quick look. I reckon that'll do. Right, what we do now, basically we're going to dress the pizza. So, uh, pizza sauce. Just as if you were using dough, really. Mozzarella. Some pepperoni. And a bit of parmesan on top of that. And I shall get some basil. Luckily the basil's right behind me in the greenhouse. That'll do. Now if you want a more uh, traditional looking pizza you can put it under the grill. I'm just going to cover it and let it steam a bit. I reckon that'll do because it's bubbling. Pepperoni pizza with a squash base. Oh, nice. No oh, different. Next. Rasta salad, green, yellow, and red. Okay, guys, I call this my Rasta salad. So it's just basically anything that's green, yellow, and red. So as you can see, I'm using a yellow courgette for this as well. All right, guys, I'm not going to make you watch me chop every single vegetable up for this one. Just to say that this is a very versatile dish. The world is your oyster, except there's no oysters in this, you know. So for the yellow, we got a courgette, squash, or a corn, or chuck some cheese in. Mustard, mayonnaise, anything you want. Uh, the green, you can have lettuce, green courgette, green squash, spring onion tops, which is what I used. Uh, cucumber, cucumber, <coughs> cucumber. Um, red bit, the tomatoes, peppers, chilies, hot sauce, bit of beetroot, tomato sauce. Use your imagination. I already know this is going to be hot. <laughs> Of course, you can mix it up if you want that. Oh! Oh, great, that's hot! Mm. Now, have a bit of squash in, as that's what the video's about. Mmm! Squash and mustard. Mmm! That's nice. Yep, another success. Lo oh, I love that. I'll tell you what, that squash and hot dog mustard sauce is lush.
Okay, another day, another dollar. We're doing a um, puff pastry bake. So we got a puff pastry ricotta. I'm using soft cheese. You can use uh, goat's cheese, salt and pepper, a bit of oil, lemon, uh, juice and zest. We need of that. Squash and courgette and um, an egg just to wash part of the uh, puff pastry. So the first thing to do is get the puff pastry cut up and blind baked. Okay then, first thing to do is, right, puff pastry, I'm sorry I'm miles away. If you use ready rolled puff pastry, take it out of the fridge about 10-15 minutes before you use it. it. Gives it a chance to warm up a little bit. I'm not going to use all of this. No, it's not. A couple of well, half size, I suppose. Yeah, that'd be all right. Cut in half. And what we're going to do then? We're going to lightly score the outside. There we are. Make a line down the outside of both. Of course, you can make these any size you want. You know. Uh, egg wash. And what we're doing, just brushing the outside that we've just scored with the egg. Okay, that's that bit done, and now we've got a dock in the middle. Docking is where you poke holes in it all, stop it from rising. You buy special tools for this, but I don't have one. So I'm using a fork. In the oven, 200 Celsius for about 15-20 minutes. And we need to uh, zest and juice a lemon. And a little glug of oil. A bit more. And mix all that together. Because what we're going to do with that is we're going to put some ribbons off courgette and squash in. And that should, so that should soften the squash down a little bit. I'll put it to one side a second because I'm going to try something. Okay, let's combine the cheeses and just wait for the um, what's it? Oh, puff pastry. I don't. I'm only just winging all of these. I'm not. I'm not measuring anything. Oh. In with the zest. Okay, that was just over 10 minutes. They need to cool completely. Or the um, the cheese would just melt. Oh, they didn't take too long to cool down. So I'll just get some cheese on. Ooh. Half and half, I suppose. And then 
just arrange your squash. Just use a little bit of coriander. Well, that looks quite nice. <laughs> oh, let's clear up the mess and have a taste. <laughs> this almost looks too nice to cut up. Hmm. That lemon's lovely. Mm. Well, that's lunch sorted. Mm. That's a keeper, guys. I'm going to do that one again. That's lovely. Squash soup. And I'm hoping it's going to be a uh, sort of curry tasting squash soup. Um, I'm doing this in a soup maker, so... Uh, not much to film really apart from the ingredients then the ingredients chopped up and then the soup maker <laughs> so what we got we got squash i'm using the courgette as well because i used that in the last recipe look a potato onion carrot a leaf off a tree which shouldn't be there <laughs> um paprika cumin coconut milk turmeric cinnamon mustard lazy garlic again coriander white wine salt and pepper to taste and vegetable stock so what I'm going to do, I'm going to chop all this up and uh, get it in the maker. All the spices. Yeah, maybe not that. Maybe, yeah. All the spices, apart from the cinnamon, are going to be half a teaspoon. That'll be quarter. Quarter of a teaspoon, that one, I reckon. Okay, let's get on with it. So that's all the ingredients ready to go in, all chopped up. Right, even though you're using liquid, it's a good idea to put a glug of oil in the bottom of these just to stop things sticking, because they can. A little drop more. And let's face it, it's olive oil anyway. So. Right, let's get it in there. Coconut milk in a tin can. Quick tip for you. On one side, make a small hole. On the other side, make a couple of big holes. You can make just one. I'm making two. Good old uh, Amazon cheap Chinese rubbish. Cool. And that way, it will pour quicker. Oh, see, it pours quicker. And this soup maker has a blend function just to uh, mix things in a little bit. Well done. There's a small portion for little old me. And the rest I'll save. A bit of coriander, coriander, everything these days. There we are. Whew, okay, then that's cooled down a touch. I reckon this is probably the last squash recipe because I've got other things to be doing. Hmm, that's all right. Needs a little bit of salt actually. I don't say that very often. Now I'm going to leave it. Well, you can taste nearly everything in there. When I say curry, it's not really curry. It's the it's curry flavour with no heat. It's got the little 
don't know what you call it, the taste, the spices, but no heat on it. Right, another one to save for supper. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed this, guys. Um, I don't think there's any more to follow. I think it's probably the 11th. Yeah, it's taken me three days to film and a lot of eating. <laughs> so I've got to edit it all now and then uh, put it together in one video. Try to get it down to a reasonable size, maybe two minutes of dish. Is that about right? Yeah, well, look after yourselves and take care. This is one of those things you see on YouTube hacks. You know, I didn't know you could do this. My life has changed since I've done this. So, this ain't gonna work, I know it's not. <laughs> yeah, but that worked, didn't it? There we are, so don't believe all you see on YouTube, guys. <laughs> oh dear. Right, I'm going to save those two for the next dish.